Let's try again, shall we? This is called adding. If I have two beans and then I add two more beans, what do I have? Some beans. <laughs> Does math assume the existence of God? Now, I know that sounds like a crazy question, but hear me out. We want math to be perfect and eternal. Like, you put a number into one side of an equation, and out pops a number on the other side, which is true and perfect for anyone in the universe who's using the same system. And on paper, it works. But there's a problem when we try to use math to understand the real world, and it affects every science that relies on statistics, from epidemiology to polling to quantum physics, astronomy, and genetics, and, well, anything else that attempts to make predictions about the future that happens here in the real world. Now, in order to understand reality, we need to make a model that you can reduce to numerical symbols that pop out answers on the other side, something that fits into an equation. And the problem is, is that our models of reality almost never square with mathematical precision. The more complex things get, the more you want to study, the more variables that show up in the model, which creates errors, which creates fuzzinesses in your result, and makes things sort of indeterminate. Now, complex math attempts to fix this sort of fuzziness in, in our results with statistics. And you might remember from high school math when we talk about distribution ranges. Uh, with statistics, you attempt to control that randomness of your outputs in your model by saying that your answer will show up in some sort of expected range of results. Uh, using probabilities, using probabilities has allowed us to make great strides forward in lots of scientific endeavors. But those advances come at a small price. They assume that no matter how sophisticated your model gets, that randomness is almost a fundamental force of the universe. We use randomness to explain how indefinite probabilities transform the definite real-world results um, from indefinite probabilities. It, we, we say that something which is sort of uh, unknown uh, becomes known because we put in this sort of like R number into our equations, or like X into our equations, and it pops out something real. And, and this idea of mathematical ram randomness permeates all sciences that deal with uncertainty, from medicine and demographics all the way to quantum physics. Now, think about medicine for a second. Like, if you take a drug, and let's say the drug makes 40% of people better, and 60% of people don't get better, uh, we all know that epidemiologically, that uh, we cannot say what particular individual will get better. What we can say is that across an entire population of people, you know, out of a thousand people, 400 of those people will get better because of the medicine, but 60% won't. But we cannot determine why any individual changes. It could just be there's too many variables to calculate. But this problem drills down uh, into your sciences that, you know, into biology, into physics, into quantum physics, and, and it really lies at the very base of all of our mathematical understanding. Now, I'm going to do a future video about quantum wave functions later, but suffice it to say that when we look at the very smallest things in existence, everything exists in a so-called quantum state, where the probabilities of something are more real than its physical presence. I mean, you can get down to these subquarks, these quarks, these bosons, these muons, these incredibly tiny things, and scientists can make predictions about where one of those might show up when you collide two atoms together and break things apart, but they cannot know where it will be, uh, because that's the, the fundamental thing in the in all sorts of, you know, the quantum uncertainty principle with uh, other quantum um, explorations. and. At this point, at that very, very tiny point, uh, math and, and randomness take center stage. And you cannot say what causes randomness because you begin using this idea of randomness to control probabilities all the way through. Now, 
Physicist like Brian Greene, who's the author of this amazing book called The Elegant Universe, says that mathematical modeling proves that the universe is deterministic and obeys understandable laws. And this is pretty much standard in, uh, among physicists, among mathematicians, is that they say at the fundamental level there are rules that the world obeys. But at, in all of their equations, they say that at some point there's this little r where, where when you put a variable in, you do not know what causes um, the, the, the real answer to drop out. You just say it's going to exist in a probability. But by assuming that there is a probability and that that is the thing that powers all equations, you basically throw up your hands and you say, well, R could be caused by a very muscular, bearded god who determines the results by pointing at your mathematical instruments. Um, or maybe that the universe is suffused with a force of, say, consciousness. Or there is some other fundamental thing that's popping indeterminateness into reality. And it's impossible to know. Uh, and while math attempts to control it with this concept of randomness, it's really no different than any expression of faith in the future. And so I'd just like to think about that, and I'm offering you this idea that, that maybe, maybe what actually is controlling the universe is whatever it is that, that, that makes something indefinite into definite. And that opens up an entire possibility of thinking about the universe in entirely different ways. So if you like that video, please like, please subscribe, and uh, write comments down below because I'll bet you I'm a little controversial and you may not agree with me, which is totally fine because I'm not always right. Uh, but uh, I, I hope there's some interesting thoughts here. Thanks a lot.